All right, in this video, the final part to the Bitcoin graph. And again, this is part eight, I believe. So there's been a lot going on here. This last part here, we're gonna focus on the lines that connect the dots. And there's a lot of math going on. Things we have to find. Feel free to pause the video here and read over this. I'm gonna cover this in detail with you. I'm not gonna go into a full-fledged math lesson because if you're not familiar with pre-calc, you're probably not gonna understand why I'm taking the tangent. If you're not familiar with algebra, then the distance formula is really what I'm using here. And this formula here is actually going to be very similar to what we did in part seven, but the approaches are rather different. I mean, I want you to think about really what's going on here. These lines can change length. I mean, look how long that line is versus these other three lines. And that's because the price difference between P3 and P4, there's a bigger difference between those two prices than say, you know, P3 and P2, P2 and P1. Not only that, you have to take into consideration that the line can slope down like these two or the line can slope up. And this is all changing dynamically based off the prices that we get from the API. So I do hope you can just kind of think, wow, there is a lot going on here to make this work the way it works. Now let's think about the things that we really want to see happen here. First of all, we got to determine, I'm gonna focus on the P3, P4, since that's a big difference between them. And I have a P3 and P4 in all of these codes, these functions or formulas or whatever you wanna call them. You can see a lot of those P3s and P4s. Those will need to change depending on what line uh, you're using to connect two dots. Like this line right here would be my P2, P3 line, that one right there. So here's what we want to happen. We want to find roughly the vertical distance between these two, but we want to find the halfway point between this one and this one, which is roughly right around here somewhere, if you ask me. That looks from there up to there is roughly the same vertical distance as from here down to here to match these two dots. So somewhere around there. That's where we want to position a rectangle. Then we want to find the distance between these two dots, which is going to end up being the length of this line. Then we have to find the angle. That's the methods that I'm using over here to get all this to work. I'm finding the vertical distance between them, finding that halfway point. I'm using the distance formula to find the length of the line, and then I'm going to rotate that line to get a certain angle. The test graph for Bitcoin, this is a component in my free components folder over in its globals. Now I could add more globals here, but there's already a bunch. And the last pieces we have to look at are the P5, P4, TB, P4, P3, TB, P3, P2, TB, and P2, P1, TB. Basically these are all the same with the exception of the P5, P4, P3, P4, whatever. As you can see, those are changing inside of there. And if we look at this formula right here, since I'm talking about P3 and P4, that is this code here. But you may notice that the P4 and the P3 are different. That's just because I typed this over here and I should have copied and pasted, but it doesn't matter. We're adding these two values. So it doesn't matter what order you add two numbers if you look at the math right here. So that is a global variable because I don't want to type that in so many times. I rather refer to it as P4P3TB. This stands for the top bottom padding for the vertically centered spot that we want our line to be at. So like I said here for the P3P4, that would be somewhere right about here. Now, before I dive into actually creating that line, we have a few more globals and it's going to be the angles. So P5P4 ang, P5P4 angle, and we had the P4, P3, P3, P2, P2, P1. All of these formulas are very similar. Let me look at the P4, P3 angle. And the only thing we're gonna change when we create these other ones are the P4, P3. And you may notice here that P4 and P3 are swapped again. It does not matter because we're finding the absolute value of the difference. So we're always gonna get a positive number here. Same thing up here when we go and use this formula right here in a few minutes. Remember, absolute value will always make a number positive. So when we go and look at the codes, you're gonna see some of these globals get used, the angle, that's when we go to rotate our rectangle. And then you're gonna see these TB, like the P5, P4, TB. Don't confuse those with the TB pad that I discussed in part seven. These TB pads here were for the dots. But now when we have the P5, P4, P4, P3 with the TBs, these are actually the paddings that we're going to apply to the lines that we connect our dots with. So I will be referring back to some of these globals in the functions that we create for our rectangle. So back in items, 
we're inside of the lines group, the horizontal lines group. I'm not gonna cover that. That's just these horizontal lines that you can barely see that go across. I created those very similar to how I did the Y axis using the GV height to space these accordingly. But what we wanna focus on is the lines overlap group. Before we dive into it, let's go to the position of the entire lines overlap group. Very similar to other parts, we have either some left padding or right padding based on the GV shift dots. This has been covered, I don't know, two or three times now for all of our various pieces. And as you can see, it's the same codes that we've talked about for left and right padding for both the what X axis, the dots, those were covered in previous parts. So now looking at the items in our lines overlap group, let's go to the P4, P3. And that is going to be, I'm just gonna take the paint, I'm gonna knock that color off that paint, and I'm gonna make it red. So now you can see the line that we're focusing on. This is the one I'm gonna focus on in this tutorial, and then once I get the idea across to you, I'll point out some differences to get these to work. And really the only thing we're gonna change is the P5, P4, P4, P3 or whatever. And then we have to be careful with our horizontal padding for left or right padding. So let's go over to the position for this red line. Now we want to apply some right padding. That's going to take this line and move it over to the left. If I take the right padding away, now I have no right padding. Therefore, this needs to be pushed to the left. And the distance that we want to push it is not one whole padding. You may think, oh yeah, we've done that in previous videos. Well, from here all the way over here, this horizontal distance here, there to there, that is a whole padding. We want to go half a padding. So you can take GV pad times 0.5. You could take GV pad divided by two. You could take GV pad times one half. It does not matter. All right. Now, top padding, bottom padding. We have to apply codes to both of these because it depends on how the halfway point between this price and this price. So let's take the two prices. We add them together. That's what you see right there. Then we divide it by two. That's going to represent the halfway point in between these two prices. Well, we have to ask ourselves, how does that halfway point between this price and this price, how does it compare to the actual GV half that we've talked about in previous videos? I know that's a little bit hard to see, but that's what I'm talking about. Well, if you look at this price and this price, if we were to add these two together and divide it by two, the halfway point would fall somewhere in here. Well, that is below this GV half of 67.44, so we want to apply some top padding to move this thing down, and that's exactly what we have going on. Notice I do have some top padding going on. Let's look at the code. If GV half is greater than the halfway point of our prices, so we take P4 plus P3, we divide it by two, that's the halfway point between these two prices, now, if GV half is greater than that, then we want to apply some top padding. There's our GV P4 P3TB. This is the top or bottom padding, and we do want to apply that since our GV half is greater than the halfway point between P4 and P3. If it's not, we don't want to apply any top padding at all. But as you can see, we are returning a number, and it's this global here that I discussed which is pretty much this guy right here. Now, we don't have any bottom padding going on. It's the same code with the exception of this inequality symbol. If GV half is less than this halfway point between P4 and P3, then we would want to apply some bottom padding. Same code though, that's good, right? But if GV half is not less than the halfway point between P4 and P3, then we don't want to apply any bottom padding at all. And as you can see, we are returning a zero here. So if I take these away, let me take this top padding away, you're gonna see a slight shift. Notice that red line is not connected anymore because we have to apply a little bit of top padding to move this down to here and then that's gonna move that red spot there down to that dot. So by me coming back and putting that top padding code in, now it centers everything up the way it should be. So that's kind of new, but then again, it's not if you watch part seven. Yes, there's some different math going on here, but it's the same basic idea. We're trying to do some top or bottom padding to position the line now instead of the dots like we did in part seven. All right, so here's the new stuff. Distance formula. Now, <laughs> I could spend 30 minutes talking about the distance formula, especially if you haven't had algebra in a while or you have not had any algebra at all, but Google the distance formula. 
So if I Google the distance formula and look at images, I'm really doing that formula right there. Yep, that's exactly what we're doing in KLWP. I know that's crazy, right? But uh, you know, looking at this picture here, you're really connecting two dots and you're trying to find the length of that line that connects them. Now, some of you who are good with algebra or even geometry, the distance formula is really the Pythagorean theorem in a different form. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You ever heard of that? Distance formula and Pythagorean theorem are directly related. They just have different looks to the formula. But that's what's going on. This right here is the distance formula. We have like a, a x2 minus x1 squared, a y2 minus y1 squared. And the way you square something to throw that out there, we do the math utilities and pow for power. And then this power here on the end is what I'm raising all that stuff to. So this mu pow with this two, is taking pretty much the difference of my y's and I'm squaring it. This is the difference of my x's and with the mu pal, I'm also squaring that as well. So again, not a full-fledged algebra lesson here, but I did want to point that out. Uh, look at the distance formula if you're curious and try to dissect that. But that's how we're getting this length here of 283 point blah, blah, blah. I have that exact same formula right here. Now you may notice again, the P4, P3, I got those reversed. It does not matter because we are using the absolute value. So now if I take this away, Notice that line has got a width of 140 or some random number. This has to change dynamically depending on these prices. So that's why we have this distance formula applied to get the correct length. Now we have to rotate this thing as well. Let me take the rotation away. And now as I drag this, you can see that the red line is changing, but we want this to change dynamically. So that's where the pre-calculus comes in. So check out this code. And we have to be careful here because P4 and P3, sometimes P4 may be bigger than P3, sometimes P4 may be less than P3. So that means our line could slope down or our line could slope up, it depends. So if price four is greater than price three, then we want to use that global that I mentioned back at the beginning of the video. That's the GV P4, P3 angle, and that is this piece right here. That is some pre-calculus right triangle trigonometry, really. So you could almost refer to this as geometry. But look up sine, cosine, tangent. So I'm doing a math utilities, arc tangent, or inverse tangent. That's how you find the angle. And when you're trying to find the tangent of something, you're doing the opposite side over the adjacent side. And I know this is probably blowing your mind right now, but the opposite side is going to be what I refer to as my Y value. The adjacent side is the X. Or you could think of this as vertical distance divided by horizontal distance. Now, if P4 is not greater than P3, then we want to use the same code to get an angle, but we want to take 180, subtract that. What I'm doing there is I'm using what's called reference angles. So again, that's a pre-calculus topic as well. But yeah, I want to show you, really, the more I'm sitting here talking about this stuff, doing this video, I can't teach you all this in one video, no doubt about it, because we have really three different types of math going on. We have some percentages, and I guess you could think of them as uh, proportions. We have some algebra, and we have some pre-calculus. And to be quite honest with you, you will learn these three topics in three completely different math classes. So they all kind of come together to give us this graph that we're working on here. So that is the overview of just the P3, P4. Now some things to point out, let's go to the P4, P5. That's going to be this shorter one right here. And to show you that, I'm gonna take away the paint and I'm gonna set this one to blue. So that one there, some of the main differences, just to point it out, if I go over to position, this still has some right padding, but it's not two paddings, it's one and a half paddings. This right here, so GV pad times 1.5 is going to position this center, the center of this rectangle or this line, it's going to position it right in between this P5 and this P4. Now notice in this one, we have some bottom padding going on, whereas when we did the red line, we had some top padding going on. And that is because clearly the halfway point between this price and this price, which is right here, is definitely greater than the GV half. So look at this B padding. If GV half is less than the halfway point between P5 and P4, that's why we're dividing by two because we're finding the halfway point, then we want to apply that global variable that I discussed earlier. If it's not, we want to return a zero, but since we are returning a value, that means our GV half is less than 
the halfway point between P5 and P4. So notice the similarity in these formulas at least. You know, now we're doing P5 and P4, so make sure you change all of those corresponding P's. P5, P4, P4, P3, P3, P2, P2, P1, or whatever you're working on there. Now the top padding is returning a zero because Notice if GV half is greater than the halfway point, well, it's not because we just said that a moment ago, right? Well, since this is not true, we are returning a zero. And by us doing this, this is allowing it to change dynamically. If I go to the shape, notice the length of this line is a lot shorter than the red line. This blue one here is a lot shorter, but it's still pretty much the same code, except now I'm using my P5s and my P4s. The offset, the angle is quite a bit different as well. It's still the same logic that I went over a moment ago. We're trying to compare and see how does P5 compare to P4. If it's bigger, if P5 is bigger than P4, use that global variable we discussed earlier. If it's not, we want to use the reference angle. 180 minus that same global right there. The same thing applies to these two lines over here. I guess something worth showing you is, let me come to the uh, P2P1, which is this line right here. So now we have this yellow one, the P2P1 line. Its position, now we have some left padding, which is going to move it over to the right, but this is still one and a half paddings, which is very similar to the P4, P5, except now we're applying that as left padding instead of right padding. In this particular piece, we have some top padding going on, which is going to take this yellow line. Just let me kind of recap this. If I take away that top padding, it's going to bump this yellow line back up to the center, so to speak. Applying that top padding code back, notice we're just using the P2s and the P1s and their corresponding parts. But everything else about the formula is the same. The same type of logic is going on. We're trying to compare, in this case, if GV half is greater than the halfway point between P1 and P2, then we want to apply that top padding. So we do have some top padding there. The bottom padding is zero since this right here is not true. GV half is not less than the halfway point between P1 and P2. And to kind of round things out, that's the same distance formula. Pause the video, check it out. The only thing I'm changing there are the P2s and P1s now. But what I want you to notice now is that we are actually applying the 180 minus this piece. Because now it says if P2 is greater than P1, then we would want to use this global. Well, let's look at that. P2 is not greater than P1. Let me take away this code. So if I start rotating this thing, somewhere roughly around 18, that looks like the kind of the correct angle, except it's going the wrong way, right? You know, if we could rotate this, and we're not rotating at 180 degrees because you'd have the same thing, but really what we want to do is take 180 and roughly subtract this number. Well, 180 minus 18 is going to be 162. So let me just type in a 162. And notice that's pretty doggone close. By me using this code here, that's what's doing all of the math for us. And this right here is exactly what I was just talking about. 180 minus that angle. I guarantee you, if we go look at the P2, P1 angle, it's probably going to be somewhere around 16, 17, 18 degrees. Let's go look at that real quick over in Globals. So there's our P2, P1 angle, the one I was just talking about. And look, it's 17 degrees. We don't want to do 17 degrees because that was going the wrong way. That was sloping it down. Whereas here we wanted to slope this line up. So we did the reference angle 180 minus that. So yeah, maybe I can motivate some of you to uh, look back into your algebra textbooks. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, Pre-calc books, right triangle trig, distance formula looking at proportions or percentages. I mean, there's a lot of math going on here. I hope you see how this does work nicely, but it does take a little bit of grunt work to get it to look and work the way it should. And finally, that's it. Part eight, this was a long series. I hope you found some things helpful here. And really, this is probably uh, one of the most involved things I've done since I've been working with KOWP in terms of me creating it, the ways that we can customize it, and also the level of detail I've tried to go into in explaining all this stuff. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.